Oh, man, today's a big day for Brian Harson. We tell you why on today's Locked On Auburn. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every day single day it's a charlie tuesday as we are joined by auburn message board legend charlie five it's a big day for brian harson charlie five let's get the folks ready what is happening today yes today march 1st the dead period in recruiting has ended oh the, the staff is complete we just got word yesterday that um <clears throat> will friend is more than likely staying at auburn uh, Georgia hired a different offensive line coach. So your staff is about 99.9% locked in. Right and now we have go from March 1st to May 14th, I believe is the date. It's called the quiet or April 14th. Sorry. Yep. March 1st, April 14th is the quiet period, but it's not going to be very quiet because you know what? We're about to blow the phones up. We're about to blow the phones up. It's time to start reaching out. Uh, cultivating relationships yes. and have electric visits. We got right. time. The kids can come to our campus. We can't go to their place. Uh, you got two weeks until spring practice starts, and then we're going to be loading up spring practice with visits. And this is a very exciting time. This is literally like the kickoff to the next football season. And um, this is a crucial, crucial off season for Coach Harson. Right, and, and my stance throughout the Harson thing, and I, I think you agreed with me, Charlie. If I want, I don't want to yes. put words in your mouth, but throughout all of this, you know, the, the drama that we saw a few weeks ago, the the best case scenario I believed was you keep Brian Harson through all of this, and maybe it serves as a wake up call, and you got to do something different. And we've seen his approach drastically change as far as you know messaging and PR. And I think also up to this point, and it's been limited. Like you said, it, the dead period just ended. So you can only right. see and say so much. Right. But what he's done has been a different approach. And you can go into that if you want. I know you've shared some things sure. in our Discord. But this yeah. is, I mean, if that trend is to continue, we should see a lot of kids come on campus. As you mentioned, this period now until April 14th, Harson and the coaching staff, they cannot go to the kids' high school or the kids' Correct. visits or anything, but they can come to Auburn. That's, yes. that's the goal. And so, like you said, with spring practice coming up, load up the sidelines with as many high school studs as possible. Uh, if they're in the 2023 class, the 2024 class, the 2025 class, get all of them here. Whatever the rules allow, get everybody here. That's Absolutely. Right. That's right. Yeah, you, you, you touched on it earlier. Um, I think that position coaches have a lot more freedom now to uh, offer uh, multiple. It's not just they, – they kind of took the Clemson approach last year, which was yeah. let's only have a handful of targets for each position and let's, um, you know, and let's hit those relatively hard. But the problem is, is when they all don't work out, you don't have any backup plans. Whereas not only do we have tons of offers out now early, early in the game, especially offensive linemen, I'm like – blown away by the uh, feedback we're getting from offensive linemen uh, that are it's a good feeling it's exactly a good feeling. exactly uh, it seems like there's 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 tons of options but also like we're getting we're getting information from kids that we may never have even known that we're interested like kids from way out of state like illinois and mm -hmm. you know off off in uh different areas that we don't uh, traditionally recruit so um which, which is something that we thought Brian Harsha would bring to the table. We didn't yes. see him in his first year, but that's kind of something that we thought. Now, I think we thought it'd be more West Coast, you right, know, him right, going right. out to the West Coast and bringing guys to Auburn. But regardless, I mean, Auburn is a, is a you know, it's a nationwide brand and kids all over the country are going to be interested in that, whether it's yeah. because of the SEC, because of guys like Cam Newton or, you know, uh, you know, with what the basketball team is doing for, for whatever reason. I mean, it seems like everybody that I run into, wh whether I'm, you know, out of town or, or visiting, you know, my wife's family up in Ohio, everybody has a connection to Auburn. And I think that's Absolutely. a card that needs to be played a little bit more. And it seems like that's happening right now. 
It does. It does. It's very exciting. It's very exciting to see. We don't have the stranglehold on on the recruiting process. It seems like, in other words, it's not this uh, very small funnel where everything goes through one person. It seems like we're really trusting these guys. Trusting Zach. Zach is is having a huge impact already. They're leaning on him. He's clearly the most uh, aggressive, the most uh, relatable. Uh, best recruiter on the staff and him as recruiting coordinator you're just seeing you're just you're just seeing hype which is it's it just it's really hard to even imagine that uh through with, with everything we went through we're actually starting to see some recruiting buzz and uh march 19th y'all circle the circle the date that is a huge day for recruiting uh they plan to have a huge visit weekend and there's already you know um, several, several big time, uh, big time targets that are um, already on the board as saying they're they're coming. So it's sort of like a makeup for what we missed in January. The whole scheduling snafu, poor planning, whatever. They're they got this right. date marked and they're marketing it the right way, and it's actually working. It's crazy how that works when you when you put yeah. something on the calendar and you market it for for weeks in advance they're probably going to have a pretty good turnout, but like every single weekend, uh, especially when practice starts, there needs to be, it just needs to be fun, a uh, fiery electric atmosphere. And um, I think that's when we'll get a first real glimpse of this new, new um, in quotation marks, this new sort of attitude, this new outlook in, in recruiting. Yeah. It's a good feeling. And, and like you said, it's interesting that the hype is where it is because I was concerned that Auburn was going to put themselves in a really bad situation based on how the public and, and I mean, it became a national storyline with how the Brian Harson thing was handled and right. it doesn't seem to have hurt recruiting, which is fantastic, which is great. And so I can't wait to see what all they're able to do. I mean, you're seeing them even go after guys that are like committed to Georgia and such, yeah. which is something that's, I think, exciting. I mean, shoot your shot, see what the interest is, get them in town, and then send them across the street to NIL Auburn <laughs> when it's all said and done. Right. Just to see what's going on, just to see uh, just to see um, all the things that, that Auburn has to offer in different ways. But it, it, the energy is the big thing because it didn't feel like, you know, a few months ago there was a lot of hope on the recruiting front. Yeah. And, and that has drastically drastically change and i think some of it is the university kind of publicly saying hey we're behind harson but a lot of it is zach gethridge i mean zach gethridge has just totally changed um the approach it seems like and, and props to brian harson for letting him do that absolutely a thousand thousand percent i'm so that that was a to me that wink to zach to zach and saying you you're the guy you're the recruiting coordinator wink? the wink the nod whatever you want to call it to him saying, Ooh. you're the guy. I'm picturing uh, Ryan Harson winking to Zach Etheridge across the room. Does it make you warm inside? Uh, makes me something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that just – that tells you that at least we we understand the impact yes. uh, and, and the, what we have to do to make it happen. So um, now you just need results. Now – so you, you've kind of laid the groundwork. You've kind of got the – you know, you got the plan sort of worked out. Now you have to execute it. and. Right these next several weeks until the evaluation period um, it is crucial to get as many kids on campus as possible. Yeah. As many kids on campus as possible. So a, a huge day for Brian Harson. Let's see if that trend continues both for Brian Harson, both for Auburn, uh, for Zach Etheridge. It's going to be a, it's going to be a big deal. Hey, I want to tell you guys about run your pool. March Madness is just a few weeks away. Go into March Madness prepared and make sure that you are running your bracket pool, whether it's your, your group of friends, your office, your folks that do a fantasy football league, make sure you're doing it through runyourpool.com. These guys are the best. They offer you stats. They offer you customizable features within your pool. Uh, you're not going to get that from the leader, you know, like folks like ESPN and CBS. You're going to get it uh, with Run Your Pool. And I, I was just clicking around on their website today, and I made my pool in like, 20 seconds it's super easy to use and, and the all the features are, it just it's getting me excited but we, you know we got two weeks away but still um 
I, I want you guys to play against us. If you want to play against us for a shot at a cash prize, you can join us at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, you can create your own pool for your friends and family. And when you do that, enter pure madness, one word, P-U-R-E-M-A-D-N-E-S-S at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. And all the rules and details will be available there. But yeah, runyourpool.com slash locked on for your chance to win a cash prize to compete against all of the hosts. That is at runyourpool.com. Charlie five, we have not chatted since the staff was filled out. And I'm glad that you mentioned Will Friend staying because Georgia hired Stacey Sheryls, which is cool. Underwhelming. Um, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But the whole um this the whole st- on the field staff appears to be in place unless something crazy happens at this point. And that was solidified when they hired Ike Killyard. And man, mm. this is I, I just I, I can't not talk about it. I, I'm just oh, no. I'm just going to gush about this hire all summer. I mean, I don't fully understand how they pulled it off. I mean, it yeah. is such a great hire, man. It, it really is. It really is. I, for for like multiple hours afterwards, I just like every once in a while, I'll be like, Dad, gum, I can't believe you just hired Ike Hillier. <laughs> you Such a know, good move, man. I, I think y'all have talked about this. Maybe not, but there was a connection. Let's talk about it again. Let's just yeah, talk. There was, about there it. was a, you know, they had that connection with Carnell that they both played. They both played at the Buccaneers. So that, I think that was sort of maybe how the, maybe the whole, the whole thing shook out. Um, but man, the, the NFL experience, the NFL playing experience, and then the coaching experience, like they just don't keep bombs around. You know what I mean? And he kept getting hired. Even after staffs would get fired, or he'd get new new jobs, um, so he's definitely very well thought of. And you know, uh, Pittsburgh's wide receivers were pretty dang good, pretty dang good. I know that I, I don't put a I don't put a whole lot of weight uh, in like X's and O's development from a wide receiver coach standpoint because I think the system has a lot to do with that sure. more so than the coach. But uh, in the NFL. Is, is a lot more technical uh, because everybody's great athletes. So there, there's a lot more technicality to how you run routes and how you create separation. I'm sure there's going to be um, some bounce back and forth between he and Harson as far as like, you know, I really like that wide open Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, spread the ball around type offense. Like how can we incorporate that? So I just think he is, he's just invaluable. He's from Louisiana. Like, holy cow. I mean, played at Florida. Checks, checks so many boxes as far as uh i mean all of them checks all the boxes i mean unless you want to just say you want a proven recruiter um but like what how do you know somebody can recruit or is proven until they actually go do it i mean i think i just think this guy will command the room anywhere he goes and i and i'm very very excited about him yeah i think it's i think it's a home run move for uh, for, for several of the reasons there and i mean Lance put together an article at AuburnDaily.com of like the top 10 receivers that he's coached. Yeah. And it's just like, man, who's who? I mean, he's just, he's, and just the, the variety, which is such a big thing. And even last exactly. year, Juju Schuster goes down for the Steelers and then the emergence of, um, you know, a, a handful of guys that had no business being as good as they were like Chase Claypool. Yes. And, you know, but even like in the slot, like Ray Ray McLeod, like, you know, just a dude that, you know, ha- has had his moments, but um, nothing like what, you know, w- we thought he was going to be going into the season. And so um, just a home run move. I'm curious to see, you know, it, it sounds like Javaris Johnson is staying, which is yeah, huge. That is big. And I kind of wonder big. how much of that has to do with it. But I mean, if you're him and you just look at some of the slot dudes that he's worked with and right. slot guys – that have been able to, you know, they operate out of the slot and they're not just, you know, the 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 two yards or three yard slants and you cut inside kind of guys, but dudes that can stretch the field from the middle of the formation. Right. right. I, I think that's the kind of slot dude Javaris Johnson can be. We've seen it at a very small sample size, but we've seen it. But even dudes like Shedrick Jackson with guys that, you know, would 12 yard the crap out of you, like Stevie Johnson and Brandon Marshall. I mean, he's coached right. those dudes. And so... Like you said, how much of that is going to be him and how much of that is going to be scheme and stuff, that's up for interpretation. And probably more of it is scheme. But the fact that he's operated within different types of schemes is enough for me and knows what you need to work on as far as, you know, okay, you're not the fastest dude in the world, but let's work on how you can generate space and create space and catch the ball at its highest point and all that stuff. 
he is going to have control over that. Absolutely. Not, you know, I read an article uh, Jay Lee posted on AuburnLive.com about Camden Brown, a uh, freshman signee. Yeah. Talked about he just he just like gushes when he talks about him, fired up about the and, and they haven't even talked yet. They haven't even had a chance to talk yet. So uh-huh. like he's just so fired up. Like so the, the name recognition there, and he talked about how well he did with the Pittsburgh receivers. Uh there's I mean these guys, um, I mean, it's it's easy to perform and it's easy to want to go out there when you're fired up to play for who, you know, fired up to play for somebody. Uh, and these wide receivers, they they're already sort of kind of turning their heads and they're they're fired up about about Ike Hilliard and uh, understandably so. What do you think his control or say will be in regards to the wide receiver rotation, or do you think that'll all go through either Keysaw or Harson? I think that I think that generally is going to go through the offensive coordinator uh, as far so, as like so, it, so is that Eric Kiesau or Brian Harson? That'll be Brian. I think it'll it ultimately be Brian Harson, and I think yeah. that the packages or will be executed probably on the field by um, Ike Hilliard. Like he'll he'll be the one whistle when they whistle down the play, and he makes sure that the formation uh, has the right. uh, personnel that it needs. Uh, but I'm sure, heck. You don't think they're going to ask him? They're, you don't think they're going to ask for his input uh, with everything that he's seen? Like this guy, he no, he, do, brings, he carries weight. He carries weight when he comes in the room. So, right, um, should be should be fun. Yeah, and I love it because there was already going to be a ton of motivation for competition with the wide receiver position. But man, if if I'm Jay Fair or Camden Brown, like you just mentioned. You have a legit chance to win a starting position right now. Hundred. You have a legitimate shot. Shed Jackson's probably one of them, and Javarius Johnson's probably the other. Yep. But I mean, you've got a chance to fight for a legit. I, I don't know who the other outside guy is going to be. I have no idea. It's going to be a dog fight. It's going to be an absolute dog fight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, and if you're a guy like Malcolm Johnson Jr., you've got a chance to find a role there, just because I think he's going to be able to use different types of guys. But I just look at Jay Fair's body. Man, I, I just look and see, like, you know, and he's posted a lot of pictures of him working out and stuff on Instagram and things like that. It's like, mm. man, that dude does not look 18. Like, holy cow. Like, that is a strong man. Put together. He's put together. Yeah. <laughs> he just it, changes uh, his last name from fair to, like. Un- it's going to be unfair, unfair. When, he gets on the, when he gets Jay on the field. Unfair. That's it. It's going to be unfair. That's it. That's great. That's great. Um. So, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff to look forward to uh, in – this next uh, month and a half, March to April 14th. And I think that's obviously a crucial time, but the big time where we're going to see have things paid off is going to be the evaluation period for from April to the end of May, because that's when coaches can go on the road. And, you know, we're going to see, we've had the scathing articles from the Montgomery advertiser that talked about, you know, Maybe Harson didn't go visit all the coaches that he needs to do, and he's not oh, doing right. the things yeah. he needs to do. Creating relationships with high school coaches—that you're gonna, the rubber will meet the road. Then that's when, that's when you have the opportunity. You have 168 visits to divvy up between all your coaches in uh, a month and a half. So maximize those. Uh, get his face out there. Go see the people you need to go to, and it, and if. And that along that same time is when we're or a little bit before that's when we're going to have this second half of the portal. So like, there's a lot of action that's about to hit. That's about to start coming. So uh, you got to be paying attention. You got to be watching every single day. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, you know, jump in the Discord. We'll be talking about it. You know, minute by minute. So uh, it's it's going to be an exciting time. This is like the, the amount of news that you you've been breaking in the Locked On Auburn Discord. Like, even if you don't plan on, like, chatting or anything, you just want to lurk. Yeah, um, lurk is fun. Yeah, you're more than welcome to. And just let Charlie Five do all the work for you. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. It's fun. It's fun. it's a lot of fun. We're, uh, yeah. And there's going to be a lot of info start to come out uh, over the next several weeks. It's going to be – should be an exciting time. I kind of think we, we're going to have several commits in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, so, several probably pop on March 19th. Uh, some, I think, the positions are going to really – make everybody happy so uh we'll should be let's let's just see let's see how this thing plays out but it's so far so good so far so good yeah and and if you want to if you want to join the locked on armor discord uh we'll put it in the episode description or the the show summary whatever it is based on wherever you're watching or or listening it'll be 
there. Charlie Five, how can people find you here? You support you, all that good stuff before we yeah. uh, jump into our interview with Zep Jasper. Zep. It's a way better interview than me. Um, uh, follow Love me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore five, auburnlive.com, message board, the corner. Uh, we already talked about it in the Auburn Discord or Monday, yep. Wednesday, Friday on the Dad Bod Golf Pod. Absolutely. A yeah. lot of Auburn flavor on there. Be sure to give uh, give Charlie Five some love. Our guy, uh, Kozan, um, yeah. had a pretty good performance this past weekend, right? Yep, yep. Uh, Andrew Kozan, former Auburn golfer, got a uh, sponsor's exemption into the Honda Classic and made the cut and had a top 30 finish. So that's awesome. it's pretty solid. First PGA event, makes the cut. Pretty crazy story too. So, but yeah, he, he's, he's he's gonna he's he belongs. Yeah, so. that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, should be sure to to give Charlie five some love there. Before we talk to Zep, I want to tell you about our friends at BetOnline.net. You can check out their site on your uh, obviously on your laptop, or they've got a great newly designed mobile site, and you can see the latest odds or totals, player performance props. Um, you can check it all out at BetOnline.net, and this is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs and it's not just football and basketball betonline.net is your source for hockey boxing ufc odds um head to the website today betonline.net where the game starts joining us now as he does every week zepp jasper auburn guard zepp I, I imagine that was a tough one uh traveling back to auburn this weekend what was kind of the the mindset of the team um no doubt you know it was a tough one you know, we went down with a loss. Um, you know, we, we played with a fight. You know, we played with grittiness. Um, you know, it was a tough Tennessee team. I give hats out to their coach, their players. Um, but one thing I'm going to say is, I always say it, if we lose, we'll see them again. Yeah. Um, we still didn't win in the conference. Um, we still got room to climb. We haven't hit our peak yet. Um, you know, it's just stuff we got to work on um, before the SEC tournament and stuff like that, March Madness. Is there a is there a specific thing that you guys are focused on uh, right now, or is it just kind of business as usual in practice? Um, well, it's just really business as usual. Yeah. Um, like I say, we lose we lose a couple games, and it's like the world shocked. It's like the world go and say, "Oh, we ain't this no more. We ain't that no more." Right. <laughs> we lose games just like everybody else lose games. We just Auburn. We so used to winning now. Um, we got 25 wins, four losses, and we we see negative comments as players. Right. You know, for those for those people who got negative comments, we use that as fuel as the fire. You know, even if you Army fans, you you give negative comments. You know, we just gonna you know when we win, we love those negative comments because guess what? When we win, we're gonna play as hard as we can. Right. And we gonna win this SEC regular season championship. I bet I don't see no negative comments. So, you know, I'm glad for negative and positive comments because it shows you the growth. It shows you how mature you is. Like, you see negative comments, you go, it, it, actually, it actually helps you in certain ways. So, you know, I just think uh, we're focusing on, you know, the, the next game and, you know, taking these two games at a time because it's crucial. We don't want to share no trophy with no one. I always say that, you know, we're one game behind. I mean, we're there one game behind us, three teams. <laughs> We don't yeah, that's crazy. We don't share. Right. We have to win these two games. We have to. No Absolutely. doubt. Not a doubt. Absolutely. Yeah, and you guys are going to Starkville to take on Mississippi State Wednesday night. Zep, I hate that place. Um, fortunately, I don't think you'll spend a whole lot of time experiencing Starkville. I'm sure you'll, you know, just go there and hang out and maybe eat a place or two and then, you know, practice basketball and play a game and come back. But I hate that place. And then, obviously, um, the chance to clinch – um, everything outright at home on Saturday. That's got to be something that's pretty cool, just the way that the schedule lined up where you have a chance to win the SEC championship outright at home. That, that that worked out pretty well, right? It worked out fantastic. You know, the truth be told, um, we get this one game. We go into Auburn Arena. <laughs> We're going to play with the lights out because who don't want to cut those nets down? Right. Who don't want to see us cut those nets down in Auburn Arena? You know how much energy is going to be in that arena if we win this next game? Right. To see us cutting the nets, to see us having hats on, taking pictures, you know how lovely that would be? That would be super lovely. Be awesome. Fantastic. You can get a picture in your head right now. This whole week is crucial. 
this whole week is just, you know, mind blowing because it's like you want one thing in your mind, one thing in that, in that one thing in your mind is that regular season championship. That right. one thing. Oh, I'm cutting the nets. They ain't, they ain't see us here. They ain't believe in us. And you know, us cutting those nets down. All I'm gonna say is they doubted us. That, that that's gonna be my, that's gonna be my caption when we win. They doubted us, but we proved them wrong. I love that. No, I I think that's all. And you know, the the way you talk about this, I mean, it just kind of describes the mental toughness of the team, and that's so important in tournament play. And at this point of the season, when everybody's tired, everybody's sore, everybody's a little beat up, um, and, and you guys are focused, and, and I think that's that's huge. Hey, talking about you know what what could potentially happen this Saturday. Have you seen the video of when? Auburn won a, a share of it against South Carolina a few years ago, and like the confetti dropped like too early. Have you seen videos of that? I haven't seen videos, but I, I want to make sure I see videos as soon as I get off this. As soon as I get, as soon as we get off, there was like a there was like a minute left in the game, and like some of the confetti started falling a little too early. And then uh -huh. South Carolina, if I remember correctly, South Carolina had like a late uh, run, and like it got a little closer than it needed to be, but um. But yeah, yeah, that was um. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. <laughs> no, no, it won't happen. Man, I, I promise it won't happen. <laughs> That's right, man. Uh, so uh, going back to, to last week, man, folks, uh, folks were so pumped for you. That was uh, that was your best scoring night of, of the season against Ole Miss. What kind of uh, what kind of went into that? It seemed like you played more aggressive as far as shooting and, and getting your own points instead of you know being the distributor that you're so great at being. Well, um, you know, going into that game, I had a mindset of, you know, I haven't been given, given, you know, to the team. And I know I play my role. You know, I play play how I want to play, play defense, yeah. do what the team asks me to do. I'm a team player. I'm always been a team player. But, you know, I've been seeing, you know, guys been keying on certain players. And, you know, me and Coach talk. We, I got a text message from Stephen Pearl, Bruce Pearl, and he just saying, uh, I need you to be aggressive. I know you got it in you. And um, my mindset the whole week was just aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Mm -hmm. Show people you can shoot the ball just like everyone else can too. You know, you just play your, your role on the team. And, you know, I see a lot of people say this and that, but I can score the ball too. I can score the best of them. I just play my role. I'm a team player. I'm always going to put my team first before right. anything I have to do. Yeah. And I always will do that, no matter what the consequence is. But, you know, down this stretch, you know, I got this thing in my head of just I have to I have to help my team out on the offensive end too, not just the defensive end, the offensive end too. So, right. you know, coming down, you know, in 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 SEC tourney these last two games and March Madness, you'll see me a lot more aggressive. And then, I mean, even against Tennessee, you shot two shots real early, and then you 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 didn't shoot it again. Was that kind of the mindset? And then the flow of the game just went a different way. What what, what happened with that? Well, I didn't really get no looks to really shoot the ball. Um, yeah, I throw two shots, but you know, it was um, there was some good shots for me to get me going, and you know, I just didn't get no more shots after then. But you know, mm -hmm. I take one game at a time and just go from there. Um, because you know, like I say, next game will come out wide open. You know, and, and be aggressive as I can, and show people I can score the best of them too, and play defense to be a two two way player. Zep, there's been a few uh, few broadcasts as of late where the announcers will accidentally call you Jep Zasper. How often does that happen? Do you get called Jep Zasper a lot? Well, I've been seeing a lot on social media. I guess my new name is Jep Jasper. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Jep Jackdown. You know, I got I got two two three names. I like I like the one Jep Jackdown. Jep um, Jackdown. Jep Jackdown. That's funny. Um, but you know, I don't know how the announcers get zip wrong. You know, it's three letters. It's three, three letters. letters. That's 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 unbelievable how you can get three letters wrong. Um I just, as someone who also has a name that starts with a Z that's three letters, people find all kinds of ways to get it wrong. I don't I don't know how that could possibly be, but well it is what it is. whatever my name is, Jep um Jep, um Zep. Um I don't know what it is, but you know, as long as we get the win, they can call me Pez for all I care. As long as I get the win, that's all that matters to me because, shoot, I don't care about the announcers. The announcers don't care about Auburn either. They, for all we care, we know sometimes they want us to lose. 
Sometimes it seems like that. Yeah, there, oh, there's yeah. no question about it. No question about it. So what's your mindset? I know it's a week away, Zep, but what's your mindset going into tournament play? Because something, I would imagine, something has to change mentally in your approach to a game when you know it's okay. Uh, we don't get to play anymore in this tournament if we lose. I mean, that has to be something that is drastically different as far as you know the mental approach than what you would see from you know the regular season. Well, you know, going into the SEC tournament, you know it's big time then. Yeah. The best man standing, the best team standing, the best fan standing. You know, it's us or them. And with this team, it's us, not them. Us, never them. So going to the tournament, we, we're going to take one game at a time. Mm -hmm. We still have the targets on our back. We still, we still are the number one team in the conference. Teams still want to beat us. But the one good thing about this tournament is no home court advantage. Everyone is equal. Right. The best fans may show up. And we all know we got the best fans. So when I mean we're going to have the energy, it's going to be contagious, it's going to be flowing. And I think we have a high chance to win the SEC tournament. Like I say, not just us, mm -hmm. our fans too. We don't do this alone. We do it with them. That's the difference between them and us. They don't do it with their fans. We do it with our fans. Right. So we're going to take it one game at a time, you know, prepare super hard, you know, and just go into the game with the mindset of just we have to win. We want to make history. This is the only way we can do it. And, you know, for all the people who say it ain't possible, a lot of people who say they doubt us, you know, not, you know, just fans on other teams. <laughs> when we win, you got to respect us. You got no choice. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. Uh, I love it. I, I mean, this is such a fun time of the year. I mean, even people who don't like basketball, they, they tune in um, over the next few weeks just because there's nothing else like it, Zep. In any kind of sport, in any kind of form of entertainment, there's nothing else like it. And I imagine it's so cool to be able to be a be in it and be a key player on a, on a very key team. That's got to be something that's, um, that's really, really cool. Zep, thank you so much for your time as always, man. And we'll chat again uh, next week, and we'll kind of get your thoughts going into the tournament, if that's okay with you. Thank you. We'll make that happen for sure. That does it for today's edition of the show. Thank you so much to Charlie Five. Thank you so much to Zep Jasper. Got to love Tuesdays. Got to love Tuesdays. Tomorrow will be a War Report Wednesday with Mike G and the gang. So be sure to come back and check all that out and more right here on Locked On Auburn.